Um, in this video, I will try to adopt a rational view of survival horror games, and most especially a game which is very popular, Resident Evil 4. And if you're not familiar with um, this channel, <clears throat> I am what Hegel, the German philosopher, calls the negative, but I am also reason, and my purpose is to find rationality within the world, and, and I believe that modern pop culture, as a particular form of art, expresses a deep truth about the nature of absolute spirit, which is the divine. And uh, my purpose is to make modern pop culture and art philosophical and to make philosophy cultural. That's the purpose of cultural Hegelianism. So I would like to talk about Resident Evil 4, which is widely acknowledged as one of the greatest video games ever produced. And there must be a reason why it is so much appreciated. And my view is that it's a Hegelian game. And also I add that I will, I will try to be comical and spiritual, because real humor is spiritual humor, as long as I can, while knowing that I will be in a position someday of no longer being able to laugh. But if you do not laugh while you can, uh, and if you, you don't laugh when you can't, you will never laugh, and existence without laughter would be a, a serious mistake. Uh, let's be serious first. <clears throat> in order to understand and to appreciate the value of a work of art, and modern pop culture is a manifestation of art, one must be able to reconstruct conceptually in its broad outlines the totality of world history, which is reason made manifest in time. Uh, and so in order to understand and to appreciate Resident Evil 4, truly the, the speculative and intellectual and rational enjoyment of of the game and not just playing the game as, as, as a video game player, one must be able to, to explain by a, a, an encyclopedic discourse how this game came into being. Uh, so one has to be familiar in the broader time with the cosmological evolution. So in order to understand and appreciate uh, video games, you first have to have a broad view of how the cosmos came into being. Uh, and Darwinian evolution, and here it's more accurate because Resident Evil 4 is a product of the brains and minds of Japanese game developers, and it is a reflection, a, a projection of partly the Japanese folkgeist. Unconsciously, a Japanese will not think and feel and, 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 and create exactly as any other group of people, because he will be determined by the entire historical of Darwinian evolution by specificities which are inherent to the Japanese people. But Hegel explains that uh, the particular contains within itself the universal. So good art is universal, but it is also a particularization, a manifestation of a determinate folkgeist, because you cannot produce art as an individual belonging to a particular group of people uh, without being influenced by your own determinations. But the more you elevate yourself toward universality, which is true for all peoples, the more, the, the greater the artistic creation. So there's this logical ambiguity between the singular, which is the creative person, in this case, the individual developers, the particular aspect, they are Japanese and they are a product of Darwinian evolution and they, they, they have their, their mental uh, representation um, and, 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 and beliefs and, and, and spiritual insights. It's partly a, produ a product of, of Darwinian evolution. And the universal, which is the artistic, creative uh, expression, which, is, which can enjoy, if it's really universal, can be enjoyed and appreciated by any thinking mind. So... Broadly, you have, I will not make the story of the cosmological and Darwinian evolution, but you have to understand broadly the historical development which has brought about uh, the opening up of Japan. So the, as far as I know, these are the, the English, the, the English uh, uh, sailors who um, forced Japan by a mixture of 
um, violence and, and negotiation to open up because they wanted to to take advantage of the of, of, of selling their products. So you you have to understand how Japan, which had found a relative stability, but the history of Japan was violent. Uh, even before the, the the opening up and the, the modernization of Japan, because the the, the aristocratic uh, order of the samurais was was stable and and closed onto itself, but there were violence and oppression nonetheless. So there's always this ambiguity with change and progress that it negates, but the negative the negative brings positivity. So yeah, so you have to have in order to understand. Resident Evil 4 and how it came into being, you have to have a broad understanding of the historical development of the past two centuries and and, and how Japan was forced into becoming modern. Uh, if I wanted to make a Kantian joke, I would say that the Anglo-Saxons awoke the Japanese from their dogmatic slumber. That's what Kant says about Hume. So, yeah. And the Japanese, after being forced into modernity, they adopted what the French thinker Guillaume Fay calls archaeofuturism, which was not really how it envisioned, but it could be defined. It was an attempt in the, in the Japan of the second half of the 19th century and the early 20th century to reconcile an archaic, primordial, aristocratic and fascistic, even though it was not strictly speaking fascism, but for lack of a better word, is an aristocratic, traditional view of society while incorporating the, the, the enormous potential brought forth by modernization and modern science and modern industry and capitalism and, and economic development. So they tried to reconcile these um, opposing forces, the will to remain deeply rooted in tradition and the will to open up, uh, which had been forced upon themselves, but that they adopted and, and to, to adopt uh, modernity, and it is very important in the history of, of the Japanese people, this, this conflict within themselves between uh, a tendency towards the past and, and the respect of the tradition and, and a will to open up. Uh, and this attempt that I call archaeofuturism, in the, in the context of 19th century uh, history, it doesn't really make sense, but it's to give a broad view, an attempt to reconcile opposites in the political sphere, it brought about what we know with the conflicts of World War II and the, the, the dramas and the, the catastrophes of, of, of war and they allied with Germany and, and Italy, which they themselves were an attempt to, to reconcile a need for being rooted in a, in a primordial tradition with, with the need to, 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 to reincorporate the disruption brought about uh, by modernity in a sphere of economic life with individualistic, uh, atomizing capitalism. So Italy, Germany and Japan were a right-wing attempt to restore a political unity within their countries. And th that's why they allied and they were defeated with um, the, the, what we know, the, 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 the horrors of the Second World War. And the, the, the excesses, and I made videos about quantity, and the, the, the Japanese were excessively nationalistic. It was nationalist fanaticism. And it was a hubris they, 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 they trespassed their measure, and because of that, they were brought back to the proper measure, and which means that this will that, that they have, that every finite being has to transcend itself, it could not find uh, transcendence in fanatical nationalism, because it was defeated by, by, by the Americans. So the Japanese, after the war, they, they sought to transcend themselves and to express their, their creative spark in, in other forms, and it happens also in, in, in Germany, which was also defeated, G the German will to power uh, could not express itself in nationalism, in, in political, aggressive nationalism, eh, nationalism anymore. So it, it found an expression in economic development. And so, uh, so did the Japanese. And that's why we had the, the economic miracles of the 1950s and 60s for Japan and, and, and Germany, which became superpower in, in the realm of economics behind the United States. But they became very... Uh, very economically uh, powerful because they 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 invested their will to power into um, into the eco economic sphere and the Japanese became very creative and innovative and they created uh, they adopted uh, t new technologies and they became uh, uh, dominant partly they they had a fair share of the world economy by by creating um, 
uh, economic growth and technology, and Japan, Japan was dominated uh, by the United States because it had been defeated in war, and it was dominated politically. The, 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 the U.S. forced a new constitution on the Japanese people, a more peaceful constitution. They were dominated culturally, although they preserved their, their own cultural roots, and they were dominated economically, and they were forced into um, westernization and, 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 and modernization. And what is uh, worthy of being understood is that without any external influence by an other ethnic group within Japan, the Japanese are in a process of committing demogra demographic suicide and cultural decay in a way, but there, there must be rationality within decay itself. So uh, the Japanese do not need the JQ that we Westerners have in order to commit demographic suicide because in a process of, of dialectical fashion, when a, a society reaches the, the pinnacle of its economic prosperity, its people loses the will to reproduce itself because they want to enjoy themselves. And the, the countries which are the poorer on this planet have the most children. They express a will to live and to reproduce and to, to, to have this, this primordial will to, to, to live. And those who uh, reach the peak of prosperity and comfort, they lose this, this vital spark. And uh, that's dialectical. Um, then... So we are in the process of understanding that Jap Japan has become not dominant, but very effective and very influential in the realm of technology. And because the Japanese, as the, the product of their biological, historical evolution, are a very highly intelligent people, and they are apparently the most intelligent ethnic group with an average IQ of 105 and maybe more, and, and one cannot understand the success of, of the Japanese economy and, and its impact on, on technology and later on the industry of video games without understanding that the Japanese are very intelligent and that they produce on average a very highly intelligent and, and, and productive population. And then if we we are in the realm of technology developing itself in the 1970s and 80s, why do human beings need games? Why do human beings need to play games? Uh, it's part of, of, of the human experience to, to wish to play, to, to, to find joy and enjoyment in, 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 in having challenges and, 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 and in solving problems and in enjoying oneself in a, um, in, in a, in, in a non-serious uh, way of, of life. And uh, the idea that I have is it, game, playing games and enjoying oneself enables to, to bear the burden of existence because existence is serious. It's, it's suffering and pain and, and trauma. And we need these moments of joy and of, 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 um, of release and relief uh, to, 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 to have a full human experience. And as far as I know, all cultures have modes of playing um, Children play, but adults need to play. Their, their games are just more serious. To be a hunter in, in um, European aristocracy was a way of playing games for the aristocracy. To hunt or to, to uh, the sailors who, who, who try to, 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 make, um, to, 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 to travel the seas, it was a, some, some sort of a game. They were adventurers playing a game, a risky game, but they felt the adrenaline and, and the joy of being explorers and, and adventurers, and that was uh, a risk. It was, it was not a game for children, it was a game for adults, but they were willing to take the game, to, to play the game, to, to experience the adrenaline and the, the rush of, 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 of joy and, and, and also thrills. And uh, yeah, uh, the idea that to play games might be to exert the strength, uh, the cunning, <laughs> one must be very cunning when one plays games, the intelligence, and to, to save oneself for boredom, because maybe um, n without games, uh, life would be, would be hard and, and suffering, but also would be boring, maybe. So one needs to play. Um, so that's the reason why video games have become uh, familiar and, and developed in the modern Western world, because as far as I know in every anthropological society there, there are modes of playing to, to, to detach oneself from the serious aspect of existence and to give oneself a presence of, 
of, of relief and joy and an and, 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 and escape from the hardships of existence. And I don't know if it's true, but I guess that most societies, whether primitive or developed, have this instinctive will to play. And in the context of modernity, it has become manifest in video games. And this is why video games exist and are so successful and are so... Um, 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 uh, sell, sell so well and, and are so successful on the market. Um, I also noted that in order to understand Resident Evil 4, one must understand that the Japanese developers try to adopt a Western perspective and to adapt to a Western audience, which probably in their mind was American, and, and to please the, the view that they have of the American audience and a very complex idea to grasp is that in the realm of economics and, and, and culture, uh, which is video games, video games incorporated within the realm of economics and culture, um, the Japanese in their society, they do not have the taboo that we in the West have around the question of race. It's not a question of shame and embarrassment as it is in our Western culture. So. The, the great dialectical irony is that in many video games, the Japanese, because they are not uh, shamed, they try to unconsciously to please a Western audience and they, they bring forth uh, an archetype of the Western man, the European white man, which is depicted in the case of Resident Evil 4, but it is valid for many Japanese games as strong, charismatic, blonde and blue-eyed, uh, handsome, uh, funny, uh, courageous, and we in the West, I speak uh, as a Westerner here, there are still projections of this ideal of, 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 of the, the, the white mind's archetype as women and men fantasize about like James Bond, but we have, because of the cultural evolution and, and the conflicts and the history of the West, we have become uh, um, uh, reluctant to, 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 to depict the image of, of the white uh, man uh, in, in, in its best aspect because we feel guilt and shame about the history of the white race and the past and the crimes committed by the white race. And the Japanese, unconsciously, they are more Europeans and more Aryans in their cultural expressions than the Europeans themselves because they depict this image, like I said, of a of a charismatic and, and funny and strong and courageous and brave Western archetype. Uh, so it's a dialectical process because the Japanese self-negate by expressing in most of their video games the archetype of the hero as European and Aryan, so it's a negation of their own particular ethnic identity, but this self-negation of the Japanese expressed in art is also the negation of the shame and embarrassment that Europeans uh, feel about themselves. So it's a, a, a dialectical dialogue throughout culture that's quite strange. Um, in order to grasp the, the, the geist, the spirit uh, of, of a folk, of a folk, the folk geist or the folk uh, soul, the, the soul, the spirit of a people, the best way to do it is to understand its expressions in art and culture because each particular people, which are differentiated by, by ethnic differentiations and cultural and national boundaries and differentiation, they express their own relationship to being, their, their highest, most intimate relationship to the nature of what to be, to exist, means in their art forms. And in order to grasp uh, the truth about a people, one must be able to grasp its artistic religious and eventually philosophical expressions and also its economic, sociological life and historical life, but it is in the art forms that the peoples, the different particular peoples have expressed their highest thoughts. This idea comes from, from Hegel. Uh, I speak here as an empirical Westerner. I struggle, and some Westerners struggle to understand the Japanese spirit, because in the West, we are determined by our own tradition and, and, and our own psyche, our, our own collective psyche as Westerners. We have a distinction between what Nietzsche called the Apollinian principle and the Dionysian principle, which in art can be um, manifested by the difference between classical art and, and romantic art or even Baroque in the 16th and 17th century. So there's this, this 
set this clear separation between classical, orderly, serious, uh, enlightened uh, view of art and the more full of life, full of contradictions, of, of an outburst of, of creative spark, kind of chaotic, uh, uh, dark, but also brilliant form of art, which we find in, in Barocco and in, uh, in, uh, in, um, in Romanticism. And I speak here as an empirical individual. I am a Frenchman, and I have a broad knowledge of French literature. And for me, Shakespeare's theater is very strange because in Shakespeare you have the comical aspect and the tragic aspect. It's serious and comical at the same time, and it's very weird. Whereas in France we have classical art, which is just serious, and comedy, which is just comical. And there are serious aspects in some of Moliere's comedy with a profound and deep spiritual insight into the nature of the human psyche. But our art in France is separated into two distinct forms of art. In, in the English, uh, with Shakespeare, it's more spiritual in a way. It's more incorporating within itself artistic contradictions and various opposed determinations of, of culture and spirit. So it's, it's, it's difficult to at first to appreciate Shakespeare, but it's, it's a genius, it must be said. And I would say that Shakespeare is a Hegelian artist, and as an empirical individual with my limited cognitive ability, if I had to define Japanese art manifested in video games, I would say that it is Hegelian and Shakespearean because it, it, it includes within itself comedy, seriousness, epic, horror sometimes, poetry, it's a mixture of all, and there is always this moment in, in Japanese pop culture where uh, there is a moment of, 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 of comedy in, in the realm of seriousness, and it's, it's kind of weird and, and, and even grotesque, but it, it, it gives charm to the, to, to, the, to the work of art, I guess. It's a mixture of, of many determinations, and it's, that's why it's spiritual, because spirit is that which contains within, it, within itself uh, opposed determinations. And then I talk about the <clears throat> survival horror genre. Uh, the survival horror genre, which is just one particular aspect of the video game industry, is a representation of a moment in the life of God because God has to confront his own negativity and, and the, 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 the primordial evil which exists within God. And that's uh, the most difficult moment to accept that uh, there, is, um, there is darkness within God. And uh, I, I must be true to myself. Cultural Hegelianism wants to show the, the, the divine truth within modern pop culture and within art at large. And, and I must speak the truth. And I know because I am the negative that I have darkness within me and that there is darkness within God. And the most difficult thing is to confront one's own dark sides and to, to overcome uh, the dark. Yeah. Uh, I wrote that those who know nothing about philosophy, German idealism or philosophy at large, might understand God just by playing video games. And uh, when they do, they say, okay, my life, maybe just playing video games and, and having a boring job was not uh, extraordinary, but at, at least now that I understand the deep, speculative, spiritual aspect of the video games that I've played, suddenly it makes sense, and, and that was, whoa, incredible. Uh, yeah. Uh, the tone, the spiritual aspect of Resident Evil 4. It's cheesy, it's over the top, uh, it's serious and, and frightening uh, at some moment, but it's also comical, and that's why the spirit of the game, the, 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 the expression of, of its truth, it's, it's so contradictory, and it, it succeeds in bringing forth a unity of opposite determinations, and um, it's not just a great game because it's fun to play. It's it's a spiritual game, a Hegelian game, because it, it succeeds in uniting opposite determinations within itself, and that is spirit. So that Resident Evil 4 is, is a very complex, very speculative game. 
uh, I wrote that people love being afraid. Uh, they are fascinated by what is repulsive. And Aristotle already knew this. Um, the ancient Greeks were fascinated by tragedy because it gives them a representation of, of the tragic aspect of existence and, and the horror and the suffering of existence, but by objectifying and give, giving themselves a representation of it, it could help them uh, bring forth the catharsis, the, the purification of the soul, and, and to, to accept and to, to, to appease the soul. And um, there are people today who still love Greek tragedies, but those who are not familiar with Greek art, uh, but who are familiar with video games and survival horror games, it's, it is a way for them unconsciously to, 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 to reconcile and to make peace with the negative and the dark aspects of existence. And people are, are frightened by survival horror games, but they are also fascinated. And, 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 and Hegel says that we are attracted by what is repulsive, because attraction and repulsion are two modes, two logical moments of the same conceptual and speculative unity, and that's why people are unconsciously uh, attracted by, by what they find repulsive, and they, they think that horror games are a form of, of repulsive um, uh, art, because it's scary, it's, it's disgusting, but they are nonetheless attracted by it, so those who love survival horror games, they are determined in their mind by by, by God himself, by the, the logical unity of repulsion and attraction and positive and negative and light and dark. And uh, they can only understand themselves by understanding speculative Hegelian logic. And that's the whole purpose of cultural Hegelianism. Uh, so, so I wrote that uh, survival horror games are Greek tragedy made intelligible for modern privileged Westerners. Um, also, in order to understand... Um, Resident Evil 4, one must understand the whole process which has led to, to, to the birth of this game and the Resident Evil formula, the, the classical structure of the game, had exhausted its potentiality, its uh, virtualities. It, 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 has become, it had become boring. And Hegel says that when uh, the conditions are made possible and that the the, 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 the unfolding of, 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 of a logical process has reached its end, it turned into its opposite. And that's why we have evolution and progress and change, because the old classical formula had reached its limit, and, and, and when the limit ceases to be what it is, it becomes something else, a new being. It, it, uh, um, it, it's a mixture of quantitative determinations, because there had been too many games with the old classical formula and the, the quantity had become boring and, and repetitive, it had to transform into a new qualitative birth which would incorporate within itself the past, that's a Hegelian moment, you have to incorporate um, the development into yourself but to bring forth something new. And uh, the, the old games had become uninspired and boring and, and repetitive, and by a dialectical twist, they had to, to, to create new ideas, to reshape themselves, to create a new formula, to reinvent themselves. And the, 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 the entire process of the development of the natural world, but the spiritual world in all its aspects is driven by a dialectical process. And I am trying to make dialectics intelligible and Hegel's philosophy intelligible to those who have never heard about Hegel or dialectics to understand that it is at work in every endeavor of human spirit. Uh, Resident Evil 4 is a linear game, whereas the, the other games were more, there were more freedom to, ro to, to move around and to explore. Here it is more linear, but also the greatest change, one of the greatest changes is the change of point of view. By changing the position of the camera, you, had a, you adopt a whole new perspective. And the purpose of cultural Hegelianism and Hegelianism at large is to say that you need to adopt the point of view of the other, the negative of yourself, in order to have a new perspective on life, and that changing your point of view can, can bring you a full consciousness of yourself and a, a, a whole new experience of life and of being. And uh, the gameplay changed. It, it became full of action, of tension, of tension. You are never at rest in the game. You are always doing something. 
uh, you are always on the move and this is the process of spirit spirit is never at rest and it is desperately if I might say seeking to re-establish peace and rest uh, but it is always always constantly um, 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 incorporated within the flow of, of the logical movement so yeah and uh, the, 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 the tension and, and, and the, the joy that one have when one plays this game is the, the, the relationship between the reaction time, you have to, to act quickly and accurately and, and, and to be precise, and you have to manage your ammunitions, you have to think fast, to act fast, you have to be um uh, to be to be um to be stoic and calm in the face of overwhelming odds uh, coming at you you have to upgrade uh your your arsenal uh that's an image of the logical process because the logical categories have to upgrade themselves and to evolve and to to enrich themselves so there's a strategic aspect in the game you have to manage your resources you have to use it carefully and and think before acting you have to to, to find yourself in a position of always having enough ammunitions to complete the game, which fortunately in this game uh, it's rare to be in a, in a lack of resource, but it can happen. Uh, and people, in order to understand the psychology of, of games, people, uh, human beings, enjoy being confronted by challenges to overcome and, and resources to, 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 um, to manage and in the privileged democracies and, and economically developed country, people who are well off, uh, high, high working class or low middle class and above, they don't need to, to manage their resources in their everyday life because they have a relatively comfortable life so they can enable, they, 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 they have the, the, the luxury of having leisure time which is the process of uh, the workers' movement throughout the, the past two centuries gaining uh, political rights in order to 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 give to grant leisure time to the working classes and to the whole of society. So it was a conquest of the political movements of, of Marxism mostly. So it must be understood as well. The reason why there are Westerners playing video games is because there have been Marxist workers fighting for the the rights of the of the of, of, of the masses to have more leisure time. And uh, even in their leisure time, the, those who are privileged enough to play video games, they want to have an aspect of management and, and, and how to handle scarce resources in a demanding environment and to, to be confronted by challenges. And, and, and they want to find the proper measure in their games between challenge and, and, and challenge to the point of being intellectually stimulating, but not too difficult to the point of being hopelessly uh, impossible. If, if the game is too hard, it will not be pleasant. If it's too easy, it will be boring. It, a good game, a great game, finds the proper balance, which is a, a measure, a quantitative quality, a, a quantitatively qualified uh, quality. So in order to be a great artist, and the Japanese developers who made that game were artists, and they must be credited for that. They had to find the proper balance between uh, challenge and, and, and the faculty to solve the problems, between tension and reflection, between management and action, between enjoyment and frustration. If, if there's too much frustration, it's a bad game. If there's too much uh, easy enjoyment, it lacks real satisfaction. And, and uh, a creator of video games must be constantly in a process of seeking the proper measure. And that's a Hegelian logical determination. Uh, I wrote that the game is kind of scary, but it's also over the top and really comical. Uh, also, there's a Marxist perspective on the game. And I've just said that Marxists are those who enabled those who are privileged enough to play the game to be in a position to play the game. So you should thank the Marxist, at least partly. This game tells the story of an American agent who murders peasants, workers, uh, religious monks. So it's it's an anti-Marxist game. It's it's the the typical American who who uh, murders the, the the classical the not the classical the the the, the old uh, the old world. He kills peasants and workers and and, and monks. Of course, they are zombies, but nonetheless, it's uh, an anti-Marxist game. He because yeah, uh, and th that's also a way of interpreting it. It's it is America in a process of annihilating old Europe because 
America thinks of themselves as a country of businessmen and entrepreneur and Europe as being a backward continent where uh, the, the landlords and the, the, the aristocratic mentalities and the Americans have a, have a very high opinion of themselves but th this is not a game produced by Americans but by Japanese and uh, yeah uh, I also wrote that this game drew a lot of influences from uh, Lord of the Rings, The Thing, Silent Hill and, and many many other games so if you want to understand how it came into being you have to understand that it incorporated not only the, the, the history of Japan and in economics and, and the Marxist movement, but also how it incorporated the influences of, of culture within itself, and that every game is the product of, of the past games and the past artistic products which have been created before it, so it incorporates within itself uh, aspects, and this is uh, what Hegel calls Aufhebung, to preserve and to negate, and uh, yeah. Uh, and to, to be inspired means to draw inspiration from otherness and to find unity in the relationship with the other. And this is precisely the definition of spirit. Spirit for Hegel is the unity of the other and the self. So, yeah. Uh, the characters in this game are over the top. They are mysterious, dark, twisted, comical. And uh, it mixes horror and comedy. And uh, I, I wrote also that the genius of the game is that it is not only addictive and the gameplay is not only very fun, but it's also uh, scary and comical and exciting. And it's so good that you want to play the game over and over again, although there are negative aspects, but yeah. Uh... I also wrote about Leon. Leon is, is courageous, he's brave, he's manly, he's comical. There's this erotic tension with Ada. Um, there's a, a profound love and also kind of... Um, be careful, do not mess with Ada because she's a strong woman. So there's this erotic tension between the two and it's, this is a great love story. And, and in the greatest love story, the lovers end up never having sex because it would ruin the entire story. So... I guess that Leon and Ada will never have sex, but the best love stories are those where um, sex is not necessary because the magnetic tension between the two lovers is enough to satisfy both of them. Uh, this game is full of spiritual jokes. <laughs> That's a, um, a really comical game. Uh, and I, I wrote that spirit wouldn't be spiritual if it took itself too seriously. Seriousness without comical would not be serious enough because to, to be really serious means to include within yourself the comical moment. Uh, and to be really comical means to include within itself the serious moment. So the, the best spiritual jokes are those who make fun of serious things. And uh, yeah, and this unity of, of the seriousness and the comical aspect is very Shakespearean and this game is a Shakespearean expression uh, uh, of the Japanese creators of the game. Uh, I wrote that there is an infinite variety of phases within the game, phases of action, tension, fear, uh, puzzles to solve, although not many, but it's always challenging and always uh, reinventing uh, itself. You always do the same thing, but it's always different, so that's always addictive. Uh, and the island, the third part of the game, on the, the military island, that's what the Greek calls hubris. It's a trespassing of the measure, because there is too much action. It becomes nonsensical, and, and for most people who have played the game, this is the, 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 the least interesting part, because there, there is too much, and whatever is excessive must be, must be brought back to, um, to a proper measure, must be... Um, uh, yeah, must be the, the proper measure must be re-established. But this excess of the game is part of the genius of the game because it, if it was just perfectly balanced, in a Hegelian view, the lack of balance, the hubris, the excess is part of of the perfection of the totality. Uh, yeah, uh, this game is a masterpiece. Uh, yeah.
and he because it was so brilliant it inspired uh, many games that would come after and that's a way of understanding that in every human endeavor uh, a, 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 crea a creator a creative person whether a scientist or a politician or a, or a game developer always draws inspiration from what has been done before him whether to 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 negate to do something new in negation of of the old but it is still to be determined by the old uh, if you are in a neg negative relationship with the past or to to try to aufheben to negate and to preserve and to to realize a, a concrete unity what is sometimes called a, a synthesis um, Leon Kennedy is the most charismatic video game character ever probably he's always cool he's the best uh, and that's really uh, the, the ideal archetype of manhood in the realm of modern pop culture uh, and I, I end up by saying that there is a possibility because we are one being becoming conscious of itself I don't know if it's true but there's a possibility that mankind will self-organize the knowledge it has of being and of itself in all spheres of life and it's a possibility, I don't know if it's going to happen, but that men, uh, individual minds, will self-organize and rank and classify all things. For instance, we are in a process of unconsciously um, classifying the greatest philosophers, the greatest politicians, the most influential uh, historical characters. Uh, and it's, it's not impossible that by, by b these videos being produced on YouTube unconsciously but it is the Europe the, not the European the universal spirit giving itself its own self-consciousness in all spheres of life that there are rankings of the greatest games ever made and it's uh, an unconscious process of spirit recognizing itself in the realm of, 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 of video game industry because video games are part of being they, they exist and they must be rationally understood so it's a possibility, I don't know, that uh, in the process of spirit becoming fully conscious of itself, we will witness uh, a self-organization, a self-classification of, of all video games, I mean the best, which are only good in relation to the, to the bad ones, and uh, we will know maybe what are the best video games ever produced, and I, I'm sure that Resident Evil 4 will be among the, the top. Not maybe not the best, but one of the best, undoubtedly. So that's what I had to say, and um, yeah.